mass. A mass and weight is often used um, interchangeably in everyday life. You, you say something is heavy, um, or we say something is massive. We almost always mean the same thing. But in physics, there is a very subtle difference that I'll, I'll now talk about. Okay, let's look at my example of a ball again. <clears throat> Suppose now that I have a, a ball, and uh, okay, it's at rest. Right? It's at rest for a change. It's at rest. Now, it's not moving. Of course, this is at rest. But let's imagine uh, uh, trying to give it a push. Now, if I try to give it a push, the ball. The ball will move, and depending on how massive or heavy in everyday words the ball is, it will move more or it will move less. Right? To be precise, <clears throat> if I apply a force, uh, the same force, if the ball is uh, lighter or less massive, it will move with a bigger acceleration. All right. Now that we've learned Newton's law, okay, we know that, or if you uh, apply a, <clears throat> if, if the ball is more massive, it will move with a smaller acceleration. Okay, so that much is clear. What do we mean by, what do we exactly mean by mass? Now, if we use the everyday uh, terms, where we think about mass as the same as weight, and weight is the force that gravity pulls downwards. But uh, mass, to be precise, to be very precise, we want to think about mass as the, the stuff, the actual thing, um, the actual stuff that is inside the, the object, the ball. Now, it is often uh, described in, in this uh, a little abstract way. Uh, that mass, mass is the amount, amount of matter. Mass is the amount of matter in a body, in a body. Now. I often find this quite abstract. Uh, you might do too if you're seeing it for the first time. We are trying to we are trying to define or we are trying to explain what mass is, right? And we say, and and in books of physics or uh, things that you read, it will it will say that mass is the amount of matter in a body. Okay, what do you mean matter? It's like replacing. Uh, a, a word by another word. So that's not part much of an explanation. I, you sometimes see in a dictionary where happy is joy and joy is happy. So what is matter anyway? The amount. What do you mean by the amount of matter in a body? Okay. Um, now nowadays, right? In uh, since the since the last century. We already know uh, all about atoms and, and molecules. So we know that inside, inside this mass, okay, inside this mass, there are lots of atoms, lots of atoms and molecules and electrons and other tiny, tiny particles. That's one way to think about it. We can think that the amount of matter in the body are just these tiny particles that make up the body, but we don't really need to. We don't need really need to think about in terms of the atoms. But the matter, the matter here, just mean whatever the the stuff that you can see or feel. Like if you if you if you hold the ball and you um, squeeze it very hard. Okay. The ball has just disappeared. If I hold the ball and I squeeze it very hard, you'll find that 
um, there must be something inside or if you if you cut the ball into half or you if you take a hammer smash it into powder there are these little specks of bits uh, of particles inside the ball so uh, we may or may not know if it's atoms inside i mean we won't know uh, if you live 300, 300 years ago but uh, it is this thing inside which which is not going to change all right if you imagine it's not going to change if you if you take this to the moon all right if you take if i take my ball if i take my ball to the moon or to outer space okay i would imagine that when i'm there it will be very light or it will be weightless even but the ball still would, would probably still look like a ball um assuming that it doesn't burst and whatever whatever it is inside the ball is still inside the ball even if i'm on the moon or in outer space so it is a little bit abstract but or a little bit uh, unclear as to what we are talking about inside the ball but but you get the idea right the ball still looks like a ball uh, uh, and if you squeeze it it will still feel like the ball even if you are on the moon or, or in outer space that seems reasonable enough so in outer space and in the moon you don't have weights all right but you have whatever you have inside the ball okay and that's what we mean by the amount of matter in in very uh the amount the amount of matter is probably one of the uh loosest definition i've ever heard in physics all right it, it means the when we say mass is amount of matter the amount of matter in the body to me it seems a bit like saying mass is the amount of whatever it is you have in the ball okay but that's that's kind of descriptive uh kind of clear enough all right it it makes it very distinct from weight all right so mass what it means is that mass is definitely not the same as weight weight is is the force of gravity pulling down an object so the mass and weight are not equal not equal in meaning all right, in the sense that they are not equal in meaning uh, but in physics all right in physics as we'll see uh, in a later, later session we also define them to be not equal in number all right although in everyday use all right we, if we say that, that the mass is say 10 kilogram all right we think we also call the weight 10 kilogram now we'll learn about why okay we'll learn about why later on so but for now okay let uh let's be clear about the meaning of mass mass is the amount of matter meaning whatever it is that is inside the, the body okay and that doesn't change anywhere uh, if you, if that does not um that's not the same as the weight okay now there is um so this is the if you like the first uh the usual definition or description of, of mass but there is another uh way to describe mass uh, if you think about measuring it if you think about measuring it well actually weight is actually one way to measure mass which we'll look at later but here I'm going to mention um, what is what might usually be be considered a, a more uh, a more fundamental way of measuring mass or even thinking about mass. Now this word inertia, uh, inertia is an idea uh, about mass. What it means is related to Newton's first law let's let's recall try and recall Newton's first law Newton's first law says that if I have a body okay if I have a body here and let's say it is if it's not moving if it's not moving it will just prefer to just stay there okay if it's not moving unless you push it okay but if it is moving if it is moving let's say this is a perfectly smooth all right perfectly smooth 
no friction at all kind of flow. So if it is moving at a certain velocity, the ball will just prefer to keep moving and moving and moving in the same direction at the same speed. All right, no friction to stop it, no wall to the, it, it will bang into. Okay. Unless, all right, the ball will just keep moving unless there is a force to stop it or, or change its direction. Right? The force can come from uh, maybe another bit of the floor, floor has some friction or maybe you decide to kick it into another direction or maybe maybe there is a, a, a tree in a way that that uh, blocks it. So, if, but if there's none of these, okay, the ball will just keep going and going and going. Right? That, that seems uh, reasonable enough. Okay, now, this, when we when we describe Newton's first law, all right. In this law, there is in this description there is something subtle, right, which we haven't have not mentioned, and that subtle thing is that um, if we imagine another bigger ball, okay, if I imagine a bigger ball that is maybe uh, moving at the same velocity. A bigger, heavier, or more massive ball, however, however we like to describe it, and moving at the same velocity. Now, if I want to stop this ball, this more massive ball, or heavier ball, if I want to either stop it or I want to change its direction, I would actually need a bigger force to do it compared to to the smaller ball, All right? To to actually change the motion of this more massive ball by the say the same amount all right either to stop it or to bend it at the bend the part by the same angle as the smaller ball now this this um this actually suggests something this suggests that mass all right the mass of a ball or the amount of matter in the ball right the mass of the ball it has a, a strange property. It has this tendency to resist any change to its motion. All right? What do you mean by motion? It means uh, like this, uh, uh, like the, the the speed, right? Like its speed um, in the in the same direction. All right? Like the ball going at the same speed in, in a certain direction. That's its motion. Now, if I, I want to change it, it means that. Uh, maybe I want to change its direction or maybe I want to change the velocity maybe by stopping it or by giving it a kick sideways okay I can do that so these are changes to its motion now if I want to change its motion all right meaning change its direction uh, by giving it a kick if the ball is more massive I must give it a harder kick all right even if the ball is just a light ball if I don't kick it it won't change its motion so it has this tendency to resist the change, all right? It won't change motion unless you kick it. Now, this this tendency or property has a has a name. It's this is called the inertia, and basically inertia is just what I've said. It's the it's a tendency tendency okay to resist. To resist change to its motion. A tendency uh, of a body to resist to resist any any change or resist changes to its motion so that's what in inertia mean and and as we have seen we would expect that a more massive ball um, would have a bigger tendency to to resist any change like if you want to if you want to kick a bigger ball you need to by the same uh, uh, so that you stop it or, or uh, give it the same velocity you need to kick harder obviously okay. so this uh, uh, and we, we describe this or we, we use the word inertia okay to, to to represent this 
this description uh, about this property and since we also know that um, a more massive ball a ball with more matter inside more stuff inside uh, has a bigger resistance to, to this kind of change to its motion um, we, we think of um, we can think of inertia right as a measure uh, we can think of inertia as a way to measure the mass of a, of a body um, measure in the sense that if I want to compare two ball alright if I want to compare two ball that, now measure usually means uh, I, I want to weigh something or I want to um, use a ruler to see how long something is and, and get a number now for now um, I'm going to think of it in a slightly less uh, like precise way I'm going to, just going to compare these two ball and I, I just want to measure in the sense that I want to know which ball uh, has more mass right? which, which is more massive and which is less massive so just a very primitive measurement so if I if that's all I want, or right, maybe I have two ball, but maybe I maybe my two ball actually uh, have the same size and shape and color. So, uh, but if I kick it, it turns out that it's a lot harder to kick this ball to the same speed than I, it is to kick that ball. Okay, and and by kicking it, all right, by by finding that it's a lot harder to kick that ball. Um, I find that uh, uh, this ball has a has a gives a, a bigger resistance to its motion now, and that then this this uh, this tells me then that this ball is more massive, right? So that's one simple way to tell whether two balls that look exactly the same to tell which one is more massive.